What's it like to be a bee? To see ten times more than a human can see? Or to be a chameleon with colors so bright? Shifting shades to hide from sight? What about a tamandua with a 15-inch tongue? What's it like to be an animal? Wouldn't that be fun? Visit the new Wildlife Explorers Base Camp at the San Diego Zoo and feel what it's like to be wild. Now open. Spring is here, and Burlington is ready to surprise you with the newest and coolest looks. And of course, the hottest deals. You'll love the deals. You'll love Burlington. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. A violent holdup at a local convenience store late last night. We'll show you what happened when an armed robber confronted a 7-Eleven clerk. Good morning, I'm Trevor Shirley, live in Washington. President Biden is in Poland right now visiting U.S. troops as NATO and allies continue to try to put pressure on Russia over its ongoing invasion of Ukraine. I've got all the latest details coming up ahead. I'm Lynette Romero in Anaheim. An unprovoked attack here at the Central Library has police searching for a man they say is dangerous. Coming up, I'll have a live report. Good Friday morning. I'm Jessica Holmes. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts makes a bold guarantee about the boys in blue this upcoming season. I'm going to tell you what he said. Plus, the pitcher slated to take the mound on opening day. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. We're live here on Hollywood Boulevard. It is the entrance to the Academy Awards. Conversation with Chris Conley from ABC. He knows what's going to happen Sunday night. We'll hear from him. And Kiefer Sutherland is on the way live. All of it coming up outside the Oscars. Uh, good morning, everybody. Fog is starting to gradually lift, but we still have for another hour that uh, dense fog advisory along most of the coastal areas. And we're starting to see a gradual cool down happening at the coastal areas. But once you get inland, it's still hot. San Fernando Valley up to 89. Downtown, 79 coastal, 72 degrees with some dense fog. Orange County Inland, 84, 89 uh, for the Inland Empire. High desert up to 86 degrees. Ginger with traffic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we still have some areas where the fog is very thick and then we have some good spots. But let's move you over to look at the stretch of the 605. So the northbound side of the 605 freeway, let's see, going north, uh, tends to be a little bit slow. And you see how it all starts to load up right here at the 105. But right about Imperial Highway, that's where they are talking about a wreck in the left lane. You're carpooling. You're fortunate because the free carpool lane will help you out and even taking Lakewood Rosemary does look a little tough both directions. This is the 57 North at about Via Verde. You see those heavy delays on that 57 soon. They're going to start to extend on to the 10 freeway, but at least for now, the stretch of the 57 doesn't look that bad as you move farther to the north and well past Via Verde. We'll watch and keep track of it. Some of that fog is starting to lift a little bit. Still got to be careful. I'll send it back to you. An unprovoked attack at the Anaheim Library caught on video here. Police are looking for this man who punched an employee of that library. KTLA's Lynette Romero live in Anaheim with more on this crime. Lynette, good morning. Frank, good morning. Police are releasing this video because they say they are concerned that this suspect might hurt someone else. It all happened right here at the Anaheim Central Library, which, by the way, is right next to the police station. The whole thing all caught on surveillance video, and it is disturbing. The suspect attacks without warning, punching a library employee who just happens to be walking past him. There are a lot of other people in the area. They saw the whole thing happen, including little kids. The attacker calmly walks away, but he continues to look back back at his victim injured on the ground. It all happened on March 3rd, about three weeks ago at 6.15 in the evening. Now, since then, investigators haven't been able to locate the suspect. They're hopeful this video will lead to an arrest. The suspect wasn't uh, known to be familiar to anybody in the library. Nobody had seen him before. As you can see in the video, he does this in front of a large group of people, including children. Uh, and none of the library employees had recognized him. None of our police officers have been able to recognize him. Uh, and we, we've uh, unfortunately hit a point in the investigation uh, where we really do want to get the subject off the streets because it's pretty clear that he can be violent without being provoked. Uh, and we want to make sure he doesn't do this to anybody else. 
We want to give you another look at the attacker. He is described as a black man in his late 20s to early 30s, tall with a thin muscular build, weighing about 200 pounds, with short hair, possibly even bald, and a mustache. He was last seen wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, light brown pants, white shoes, and a Dodgers baseball cap. The suspect was carrying bags of clothes, leading police to believe that he might be a transient. Now, if you have any information, you are urged to contact the Anaheim Police Department. Coming back out here live, we are told that the employee who was attacked uh, did fall. He hit his head when he hit the ground, so he was taken to the hospital where he was treated and released. We are also told that he is back to work here at the library. Reporting from Anaheim, I'm Lynette Romero. I'll send it back to you. Lynette, thank you. Now to developing news in Montclair, where an armed robber pistol whipped a store clerk late last night. Happened just before midnight at the 7-Eleven on Holt Boulevard. Surveillance video shows the suspect walk behind the counter and point the gun at the clerk's head as he demanded money from the register. Entire heist took less than a minute. When the clerk finished emptying out the drawer, the gunman pistol whipped him, knocking him to the ground before running out of the store. Clerk refused medical attention at the scene. The store manager says the robber got away with a few few hundred dollars. An investigation underway this morning of so-called deputy gangs within the LA County Sheriff's Department. Civilian Commission that oversees the department says at least six former federal prosecutors will look into allegations of violence and corruption that goes back decades. They'll subpoena witnesses to testify under oath. Sheriff's Civilian Oversight Commission wants to find out in the next six months where the groups operate in the Sheriff's Department and what impact they're having on policing. Sheriff Alex Villanueva called the panel a fishing expedition and political theater. New this morning, Ukrainian officials are now saying as many as 300 people were killed in a Russian airstrike on a theater in Mariupol. That was the building that was being used as a bomb shelter by civilians. There were large signs outside that said children on them. That news comes a day after President Biden and NATO announced that new sanctions against Russian lawmakers and elites would go into effect. KTLA Shirley, uh, Trevor, live in Washington, D.C., with more for us. Frank, good morning. That news about the theater came out earlier today. So far, no official response from the White House or the administration. But the fact that we're talking about so many deaths from just one airstrike really underscores the pressure that Western leaders are under to try to figure out how to stop uh, the killing that's happening right now in Ukraine. You may recall that uh, strike actually happened a few days ago last week. It was expected the death toll could be high, but now officials on the ground uh, confirm about 300 people were killed when Russian bombs hit that building. It was being used as a bomb shelter primarily for women, children, and the elderly. In the meantime, yesterday, President Biden and European allies announced even more sanctions on Russian lawmakers and societal elites. The president also announced a new partnership to try to wean Europe off its dependence on Russian oil and energy. Some experts say Europe is still paying about $1 billion a day to Russia for oil and natural gas. As part of this new agreement, the U.S. and allies will increase shipments of liquefied natural gas to Europe. 